It's good to be with you once again. I'm I'm super glad to be opening the Word of God with you again, and um, <clears throat> it's uh, been encouraging to speak and share with you uh, through this week of just even praying with many of you, and I'm just encouraged to hear how many of you here at our Church and Creators Fellowship are uh, growing in the Lord and just encouraging one another and finding ways of just seeing the uh, God's blessing over your life, and I'm, I'm still super excited to get back and meet with you in person. And I pray that you are encouraged at just looking around and seeing what God's doing in our community and uh, <clears throat> all of the healthy things that are coming out of, of this uh, endeavor, this virus, this circumstance that uh, surrounds us. And um, so I, I hope you're still continuing to pray for our leaders, our tribal leaders, our community leaders and pray for um, just the church as a whole. Um, speaking with many other pastors uh, around the reservation, um, it's, it's neat to see how they're also finding new ways to worship and fellowship with one another. And so pray for them, pray for our brothers and sisters scattered around, <coughs> and um, as well as uh, around the world. Um, it's uh, brought many challenges um, that uh, that maybe we don't face here, a lot of them that we don't face, uh, that they're facing directly um, because of these lockdowns and quarantines. And so I just uh, want to encourage you to pray for the believers around the world and the church to be encouraged and uh, for endurance. And it, <clears throat> it goes right along with uh, this next fruit that we're going to be looking at today, the fruit of the spirit of patience. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's always the, the saying, don't pray for patience. Um, the reason being is because God's going to develop it in you. And I found over the years that the things that I've been preaching on or teaching on, whether it's teaching through Hebrews on Wednesday nights for the last um, year or so, is that God uses that scripture to uh, teach me, not not just on a on an intellectual level of just reading and, and studying words or whatever, just uh, meditating on it, but in real life application of just... Um, of seeing whatever it is that I'm teaching or talking about, how it's demonstrated or it's, it comes to light in my own life. And sometimes that's really challenging. Um, but overall, it's really encouraging uh, to see how, how God works and moves in our life as we're studying His Word, as we are seeking after Him. I, I pray that my heart is always open to that. <clears throat> but teaching and preaching on patience is, is not easy because it seems like this week, I've had to learn it that much more, and I, I think it's the Lord just teaching me um, in real life, uh, not not just words on a page, but just the application of the the patience, the fruit of the Spirit of Christ um, in my life, and, and that by no means says that I've got it all figured out by any means, but <clears throat> it definitely... Uh, challenge you to to look at and your surroundings and to look what's going on and and be encouraged um that, that the word of god is alive as well and uh he is living jesus is alive he's sitting on the throne he is sovereign over all the earth i believe that with my whole heart and i hope you're encouraged by that today and and it just becomes that much more real and alive when when you're opening his word and the things that you are looking at and the things that you're reading and meditating on are the things that God is is showing you and demonstrating you in in real life time and so um, I'm grateful for that I'm grateful for the Word of God this morning I'm grateful that you have the opportunity uh, that you're giving me the opportunity to to look at the Word of God with you today uh, let's pray father I love you and I thank you so much for how good you are, Lord. I thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. I thank you for um, <clears throat> just your word, Lord, that is sharper than any two-edged sword, Lord. And just the thought of that, of, of just the, the power and, and just the effectiveness of your word, Lord. I just, I'm so grateful that you did not leave us uh, with nothing, Lord, but that you gave us your spirit, uh, that you gave us your word, uh, that you equip us and that you give us uh, your ability and that you give us your grace and your authority. And I'm just, I'm moved by that, Father. I, and I, I just um, convicted many times of not not realizing what is, um, what you've given us, Lord, not taking advantage of it. And so, Lord, I just pray that you um, help us open our eyes, open our eyes as we, uh, open your word, Lord. Open our eyes through um, just our day-to-day -day life of what you're doing. 
and how you're growing us, how you're making us more into your image, Lord. And I pray that you just um, you just continue to, to give us more grace. Sounds like a, a needy request, but Father, it's because we are a needy people. We need you. We need you this hour. Uh, we need you this, this week, this day, this month, Lord, this year. We need you. And, um, and so, Lord, I just pray that, um, that the patience that you demonstrate toward us, Lord, that we would be demonstrators of that as well, Lord, that your, your spirit, Lord, is producing this in our life, Lord, and that we are not rejecting it, but we receive it. And Lord, that, that the world around us sees a, uh, the patience of Christ over our life. And so, Lord, we, just, we, we ask for your help this morning as we open your word. We love you. We give you the, all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 and 23 is the verses that we've just kind of been taking note of over the last three or four weeks. And um, Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. And that's what we're going to be talking about, about today. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things there is no law. Um, I cannot help but be reminded of the, the previous verses before you get to Galatians uh, 5.22. Is a, we've talked about it a few times in the past few weeks. Is the contrast of just the, the nature of the flesh, uh, the works of the flesh, um, the fruit of the flesh. And, um, and I, I've just been, every week I, I think about the, the contrast between the nature of Christ and the nature of Matt. You know, the, the nature of, of our flesh um, and I am, um, I'm so glad that the, that the father gives us his nature, that he produces his spirit, his, his fruit in us. And I, I pray that that's your heart, uh, today as, as we talk about just this one specific fruit of patience. Um, <clears throat> we can talk about patience from the sense of just our everyday life. And, uh, Matter of fact, I think now is a, a perfect time to even talk about that because um, you, you have the there's a waiting game of of even what um, a lot of our leaders are asking us to do is stay at home and wait. You know, stay at home, uh, don't go anywhere, don't you know, don't go out and about, just stay quarantined. And uh, the term they've used here on the res is lockdown. We're on lockdown. We're on shelter in place. So stay at your home, your residence, and. Um, that's fun for a few days, maybe even a week or two, but but then all of a sudden there's this impatience and you see it even more in the kids of, why aren't we going to church? Why? I wanna to go to the store, I wanna go here, I wanna go there, why can't we do this? And, uh, and uh, it's not just the kids, it's the adults as well. I find it in my own heart, uh, a stirring to, to be busy. And sometimes it's really hard to be patient. Um, and the psalmist says, be still, and know that I am God. God. God tells us just just sometimes there's that grand opportunity we have, and even if it's not an opportunity, the the responsibility we have just to sit still and recognize and know that He is God. Um, <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, when they first had the 72 hour lockdown here, um, they released it. They they lifted it for uh, two days, I guess, for for about a day and a half or so. And so that Saturday morning. I left out early and I went to Shadron, uh, went to Walmart to get a few groceries because they told us they were lifting it for a couple of days and then we were going to be on a 14 day lockdown and I got to Walmart and it, it wasn't too bad crowded wise. I mean, there was a good amount of people there, but it was what, what I expected, I guess. And I was getting groceries and I came around the corner and I saw the line on the back wall you know, where the electronics and toys and stuff are in normal Walmart, or the layout of Walmart. I saw the, the line come down the center from the cash registers all the way back to that back aisle and then turn and go all the way back to the corner and then turn back and head back to the registers doing a big U shape. And there was a line and I thought, what in the world was that for? And I, I remember I was walking past and I was like, what are they in line for? And then as I turned around the corner there, I'm, I'm just kind of strolling around, taking my own time. I realized that that is the line to the registers. Uh, and all of a sudden my heart sank because here I am just doiling around, um, just minding my own business. I had already got the groceries I needed and I'm just you know walking around and I realized that is the line to get out of here. Um, and I thought, 
<clears throat> I mean, it is what it is, I guess, you know? And so I go to the back of the line and the fellow at Walmart standing there and he's directing people, uh, doing a great job. And I just started a conversation with him. He said, this is by far the, the craziest he had ever seen it. And it was worse than any Black Friday or any other thing. He'd never seen it like that. He didn't know what was going on. And I explained to him about the lockdown that we had been under and then that they had released it for a couple of days. And he didn't, he didn't realize that. And, but as you're waiting in that line for quite a while, it was over an hour of waiting and it was moving pretty quickly, but the line when you first saw it was overwhelming thought, man, this is going to be all day, <laughs> I felt like. Um, and a lot of it was just how they were spacing people apart and all. It, it made the line seem longer. But as we were moving, I saw people walking by and they were thinking the same thing I was thinking of what are all these people waiting in line for? And being towards the back of the line where I was at, when I first started, I realized uh, watching these people that the realization that they're having is what I had, that this is the line to get out of here. And I saw the look of misery on their face and just the response of different people. Some people received it like laughing, like this is crazy and, and thought it was kind of funny in a sense, like what are you gonna do about it? Kind of the sense I had. But then some got really irritated and upset and mad. And I thought, well, what is it gonna do? Um, but I would hear people mumbling and complaining and uh, anyway, that is a, it was just fresh on my mind because that was just a couple of weeks ago and I'm sure you've had a similar experience if you've been to the grocery store in, uh, in the last month or so of something like that. A few years ago, I learned a word though. Um, when uh, a word in Lakota and <clears throat> I, I remember when we first moved here, the first funeral um, that I preached at, um, well, maybe not the first, but within the first few funerals I had preached, I realized um, the timing of things here is different than what I was um, used to. And not saying that's bad or good, but it was just different. And, and I know many of you probably know where I'm going with this, but a lot of times a funeral would start at, say, one o'clock. Um, but what I realized uh, here it is, would be like 120, 130, and there wouldn't even be half the family there and and I would start getting worried or anxious about it like we need to get started and <clears throat> uh, after a few funerals uh, an elderly lady came over to me one time and said why not I didn't know what that meant <clears throat> and so I just looked at her and she said why not <laughs> and uh, and then the fella sitting next to me at this chair said that means it's ready um, and and I was like, oh, okay. So it was time to get started. And this was a couple hours after the funeral was supposed to be started. Um, this is true for birthdays, weddings, uh, pretty much any any event in our community here. It seems like uh, there's someone in charge that comes and says, why not? And that means it's ready. They're here. Whoever is supposed to be here is here. Pastor Mike used to say that uh, the, in Indian time is like, uh, basically we start when everybody gets here and we get finished when we're done. Uh, why, why would we get started before everyone's here? And, um, and so there's a piece to knowing uh, that, um, that it's all gonna be okay. Somebody's in charge and they're gonna say it's ready and they're gonna tell you it's time, it's ready. Let's get started. Um, and so I've since uh, I've learned to enjoy that word. And now I, I, that I know what it means, I, I, I try to sit patiently uh, many times and just wait for somebody to come say why not. And then it's time to time to get started. Um, I've noticed that there's some people that are just naturally patient. Some are naturally patient with children. Some people are naturally patient with elderly folks. Uh, they're in hospice care. I, I've, I've been in hospitals and hospice care and you see some of these nurses and they're so patient and so kind and so gentle. Um, the same with kids working in the school. We have some fantastic teachers that are so patient with kids um, in, their, in their spelling and their math and their mistakes and their testing. They're just so patient, so kind. There's some people that look after handicapped uh, people and, and are just a handicapped person. They're so patient with them. And, and I just, um, I, I applaud you and I'm encouraged just to see uh, that type of patience. And, and I look at my own life and I think, well, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty patient in some ways, but then the closer I look at my life, um, there's a lot of areas that I'm not very patient in. 
um, it's easier for me to be patient in a really long line at a store sometimes than it is um, to exercise patience with with people uh, specifically like an individual in front of me and um, and so the Lord is just teaching me a lot through this and I, I pray that you're patient with me as, as we look a little bit closer at this fruit as we get started I, I want to look at two ingredients two things that uh, work in us to demonstrate the patience of Christ the first ingredient I want to look at is <clears throat> humility. Um, I can't help but think of humility when I've been thinking of patience. Throughout this whole week of just thinking about patience, humility has been uh, just on the forefront of all of my meditation through, through patience uh, on our part, on what patience looks like in my life, of what uh, patience and, 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 and uh, of Christ looks like is, is humility. Um, even even when Christ was obedient, even unto death, it says that uh, he humbled himself, became a servant, um, humble, humbled himself before his father, just even the recognizing the father's plan and even the timing of God's plan. <clears throat> if you think about it, um, when we um, to move beyond the timing of what God is doing. So if we're talking about patience of just uh, time and just waiting in line or waiting or or, or carrying a burden uh, as we're going to get to in a moment the idea of that uh, to move beyond that timing is is really uh, uh, the timing of whatever God's doing in your life is to say that my timing is better than yours God uh, I'm above God um, that I'm on the same level as God um, to say that um, I, I'm going to do something in my situation in and of myself without waiting on God is to say that my plans are better than God, that my thoughts are better than God, that my ways are better than God, um, better than God's. And uh, it's just not the case. That comes from a level of pride of, of looking at your surroundings or your circumstance or your situation and saying, God, do you even know what's going on? God, do you know when the deadline is? Are you sure you know when the deadline is? Are you sure you are you sure you're working this out for my good? Do you not fully get uh, the situation here, Lord? You know, and, and I, I I can even remember in my own life of of looking back over my life in instances of um, impatience of of just over the last couple of weeks of just thinking about moments in my life where I have been impatient has been a direct correlation with sin in my life. <clears throat> it resulted in sin. Um, and it, it comes out of this idea of, of just thinking that your ways are better than God's. I don't, I don't remember thinking in, in a moment of, of impatience of thinking I'm better than God. I don't, I don't think it really works that way for us as believers a lot of times. Um, a lot of times we do it instinctively uh, because of that lack of humility in our life, um, because of pride in our life, to think that my ways are better, that my timing is better than God's. A few things I've learned about the, the timing of God, one thing specifically is God's timing is always slower than mine. Uh, if you look all through scripture, you never really see God do anything in a hurry. And, uh, and that's that's good, right? That's He's God. He's perfect in all his ways. Um, but from the human standpoint, from our flesh understanding, when we look through Scripture, you see God moving at a God pace, at, at just an eternal mindset of timing, of seeing the whole picture. And when we see things in our own element, in our own circumstance, in our own little environment, in our own little home, uh, there is a lot of opportunity for impatience to start acting above God, to make things happen in your own strength. Um, and so that comes from a, a lack of, of humility. I've seen God throughout my entire life um, in my own eyes, in my own flesh, feel like he's moving really slow. Like, God, can't you just move a little bit faster? And that thought, that underlying thought in my own life is, um, is out of pride is out of a uh, lack of humility of humbling yourself before the mighty hand of God that he will exalt you in due time. Uh, even the idea of that verse as it comes to mind is humbling yourself, that, that we humble ourselves, that we place ourselves under the mighty hand of God. I mean, all of us one day are gonna be humbled. 
Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. I'm praying that today, that today Matt Haddon falls and is broken before the holiness of God in a humble way of myself humbling before God, of recognizing God's plan over my life, of recognizing God's purpose over my life, and recognizing God's timing over my life in such a way that says, God, your ways are better than mine. Um, in, in that verse in Jeremiah where it talks about, you know, God's ways are not our ways, our, his thoughts are not our thoughts. I've always kind of put my own little tagline on there that it's not just that they're different. God's ways are always better than our ways. God's thoughts are always better than our thoughts. And so as I think about it like that, when I, every time I hear that verse or it just comes to mind, I'm reminded that God's ways is not just that they're different than Matt's. It's not just that God's ways are different than ours. His ways are better than ours. His thoughts are better than ours. His timing is better than ours. Um, and, and so I want to find myself in a place of humility, of coming before the Lord, of recognizing, God, your ways are better than mine. Your timing is perfect. There's, there's, there's no lapse of time. There's no, um, there, there's no uh, late to the party when it comes to God. It's always, why not? I'm ready. It's ready. Things are ready right now. Um, and so let's move on. He is that elder. He is that one that's in charge that comes to you and says, why not? It's ready. Um, everything's good. Everything's right. Like, let's get started. Um, but a lot of times we, we are basing our life, our circumstances, our environments off of our own knowledge of what's going on. And, and there's place for anxiety and agitation and frustration. And, and God's just God, God knows when things are ready, when things are right. Um, and so me having that humility to understand that his timing is perfect. Um, and yes, he knows that deadline. And yes, he knows what you're carrying. And yes, he knows the circumstances. And yes, he is working all things to the good in your life for those that are called, that those that love him and are called according to his purposes. If that's you today, he is working those things out for your good. Um, and having that understanding, that humility to understand that, yes, his ways are perfect. He is, he is good in all that he does. And we sing songs about it, but a lot of times when it comes in our life, we act outside of that spirit of humility. We act outside of the fruit of patience in our life, and we think that we are above God, that we can go in debt for this, that um, my finances aren't quite right, so I can't trust God with my tithe, I can't trust God with my income at this moment because things are really tight, and, and we put ourselves above God in that sense of thinking, well, here is my natural understanding, and here is the what I have and the resources that I have, and that's all that God can work with in my life, so I'm not going to give to him any more or any less necessarily, um, I, but I can't trust him with all of it because I just don't see how it's going to work out. I don't see how I could pay this bill. I don't see how I could fit all the time in. God's wanting me. He's putting on my heart to serve, but I just don't have time to serve uh, those people or serve that family or serve serve uh, uh, the, the member and my neighbor down the road or even uh, share the gospel with them. I just don't have time. I don't have the gifts. And, and so we just, we look at all the resources around our circumstance and our environment and we make judgment calls uh, on our resources, on what we have, on what we can bring to the table, on what we can do rather than what God can do in our life. Uh, and so that spirit of pride leads uh, to a, a lack of patience in many believers' lives. Um, humility is the first ingredient of, of just demonstrating a Christ-like patience in our life, of understanding that God's ways are better than mine. Uh, he knows he knows my environment. He knows what's going on, and uh, and he's in charge. God is in charge. God's ways are better than our ways, and I hope you understand that today. Um, when I when I said that, looking back over the, this last week of just thinking about different times when I've been really impatient in my life has led to uh, just a direct correlation of, of sin. Um, it might not be living in sin. It it, it might have just been a sin moment. Um, uh, I am going to share one story with you. When I was, uh, <clears throat> I believe I was about 12 years old, we had uh, some 
friends of the family that are very dear to us and still are dear friends of mine and um, my dad and myself and um, my, my friend's dad and him we went deer hunting and uh, these guys were always talking about these great deer hunts and would get these big deer and uh, I would get jealous of it um, at that point in my life I never never shot a deer and it was a, a, a thing that I desired um, and if you've ever been hunting or grown up hunting, you know what I'm talking about, but it was something that I desired and I would hear all these great hunting stories from all these other people around me and I just never figured out why, why we, my dad and I never got anything <laughs> hardly it seemed like. Uh, and uh, it became a, a point in my life of hunting will exercise patience for you. Uh, even to this day, I still love to hunt. There's a certain level of patience that it that it produces in your life of just being patient. And uh, um, as a 12 year old, I remember I was sitting in deer stand and it it was kind of cold. It wasn't it wasn't real cold, but it was pretty cold. And after you're just sitting still for a while, it gets even colder. Uh, I had the thought we were deer hunting with this these friends of ours, and they were and we were all scattered about a little ways and. I just wanted to have some sort of story so bad and I remember making the conscious decision of firing my rifle in the air. Um, I didn't quite have the whole story figured out. I just knew that at least uh, shooting at something and not getting it was better than never seeing anything. And my impatience led me to lie. I shot the rifle up in the air and uh, my friend Bobby came over and I said it was right there and I made up this whole elaborate story. Um, even to the point of cutting my hand to put a little blood on on the ground and um, we looked for this deer for <clears throat> many hours I believe for a couple hours and um, I remember it was later I, I believe it was later that evening of just that spirit of conviction it's amazing what the Holy Spirit does in your life when when you when you sin and uh, I had to make a tough phone call to them and tell them that I had lied about that and um, ask for their forgiveness. And I, I thought of, you know, those type of stories, I, you don't ever really forget, but you don't really think about them until this week I'm thinking about patience. And I thought there as a 12 year old, uh, me as a 12 year old, of even just that spirit of, of pride and just that impatience. And I know it seems frivolous or silly you know over a deer story a hunting story but at the same time how many times have i done something similar in my life because of impatience of not wanting to go through the process of of god's timing of not wanting to go through the process of the hunt of the work um but just to have a story and we end up with nothing um and and there's always sin involved and, and I just look back at my life as I got older of even going in debt for different things has been out of a spirit of impatience, of not waiting on God. God's ways are always better than our ways. Yeah, I believe it was within the next year um, I'd shot my first deer, just so you know. And um, the Lord has blessed me with, with many great hunts over the years and living here in South Dakota. I've had some great hunts here and have been able to um, I have some great deer meat and turkey meat and different things over the years and I'm grateful for that um, but it goes back to before I ever experienced that of being willing to lie to a dear friend just to have a story with no product with no meat with no with no uh, real anything um, just a hollow story and uh, have you ever done that before I mean uh, if if I fast forward that over the the next you know 30 years 20 years <clears throat> how many times have I done that when it came to the things of God of willing to go around God's timing to go around the work to go around the hunt to go around the endurance or the perseverance just for a, something hollow with no value, no eternal value, no no winning people to the Lord, no people seeing uh, the patience and the nature of Christ on my life and just sacrificing every bit of that for a hollow story with no value, with no meat. 
And uh, I believe we as believers, we do this constantly. If we really truly evaluate our life of where we are spiritually, we, we trade in the nature of Christ, the patience of Christ for something hollow that has no substance, substance whatsoever, no, nothing substantial, uh, nothing there uh, for, for sin, for, for nothing, for the, the very thing that Christ gave his life for me, endured the cross, was patient for me. And I just, I trade that in for nothing for the very thing that he paid for over my life and um the more i i look at that when we look at the fruit of the spirit you like love joy peace the things that we've already looked at is like yeah you can those are things that believers you know need those are the important fruit of the spirit but then when you get like patience it's like well you know okay you know they need to be patient in line patient at the red light i hope you realize that this is way more than just that everyday patience. Uh, there again, I know people that are patient with kids, with patient in their job, and some of the most patient people that don't have this patience of Christ. We're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. This is of the Spirit of God. This is beyond just a natural uh, patience that we exercise in our day-to-day life. This is this is a patience. This is an enduring. This is a, a, a carrying a burden, waiting on the Father patiently just as Christ has demonstrated to us uh, if you look at the word patience in Galatians the word there really means to be under a burden to carry a burden well if uh, you know if you've seen these people carrying a big load on their back or on their head these pictures you know huge amounts of weight and all and just being able to carry it well of a great carrying a great burden uh, and to be under that burden for a long time. That's that's really what the word means. The KJV uses the word long suffering in this verse. That it's it's a it's a long temper. It's it's being able to suffer for a long period of time. Um, <clears throat> and so that's what this idea of patience, it's not just this, you know, this like everyday thing, but to be under a pressure for a long period of time. It actually carries the idea of being in a position of power. Um, so when you look at this word long suffering, imagine yourself being in a position of power and somebody doing something wrong to you or being in a place that is, is burdensome, that is heavy, and you having the authority and the power to change that, but instead you are long suffering. Uh, you are not seeking revenge. You are not seeking necessarily to get out from under that burden. You are long suffering for the sake of the people under you and the people around you. God demonstrates this patience all through scripture. He demonstrates his long suffering all through scripture. Some of my favorite verses, even through Isaiah, is, is like this questions of, of God saying, how long have I waited? Like, uh, have I not outstretched my arm for so long? Have I not covered you for so long? Have I not been so patient and long-suffering with you? Will I not continue to be, God says. And he, and he tells the children of Israel that. Hey, look at my track record of how patient I've been with you people. Do you not think I will not continue to be long-suffering? God is a patient God. And so when we start looking at not just this everyday waiting and line patience, but we start evaluating and, and comparing ourselves with the patience and the long suffering of God, uh, that is a whole nother level of patience that, that Christ is going to have to produce in my life. This is of the spirit of God. It is not natural. We've already looked at that for every other fruit that we've looked at. This is not uh, of the of the natural flesh this is of the spirit of god this is the fruit of his spirit the fruit of his nature and so this is something that christ is going to have to do we see this all through scripture in romans 2 4 uh, we see that god is patient with sinners uh, it says that that god's patience leads to our repentance if you've ever repented of your sin today it's because of the patience of god his patience leads to our repentance paul glorifies the lord for his unlimited patience that saved him. The worst of sinners in 1 Timothy 1.16. Paul, Paul talks about Timothy. He's like glorifies just his unlimited patience of God that he was willing to save him. Paul, the worst of sinners. Peter highlights the patience of God in 1 Peter 3.20, pointing out uh, that God had immense patience 
with the evil people of Noah's day of just looking at that, delaying judgment as long as possible. In Genesis 6, you get that picture of Noah just preaching for 120 years and nobody listening, but God in his patience prolonging that judgment for as long as possible, being patient with people. Today, even, we see the Lord's patience that He gives us time to be saved. He gives your neighbors time to be saved. He gives your family members time to be saved. In 2 Peter 3.15, it says, And count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him. The same patience that Paul experienced, this this just uh, unlimited patience that saved him, is the same patience for us today that saves us. The patience of the Lord is salvation to us. It's salvation for those around you. I'm so grateful that God is so patient with us. He's patient with us before we come to him in faith. He's patient with us after we come to him in faith. And um, it's the spirit of God that produces this type of patience in us. He's making us more Christ-like. In 2 Thessalonians 3, 5, it says, may the Lord direct you, direct your hearts to the love of God, and to the steadfastness of Christ. Um, Different versions give you different words there, but to the long-suffering of Christ, to the patience of Christ, to the steadfastness, that endurance of Christ. May the love of God direct our hearts uh, to the, may the, may the Lord, the Spirit of God, direct our hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ, to the steadfastness of Christ, that Christ The Spirit of of Christ is making us into His image, that we're we're being fashioned after Him. We are being, it's a slow process of being made into into who He is, into the image and Christ-likeness that that He is. Um, Just as with uh, love and joy and peace, now we're at patience that Christ is producing this in us, that it's His patience that's being produced in us. He is, and Christ, even to this day, is patiently waiting uh, the completion of the Father's plan. The Bible tells us that in Hebrews 10, it, it says that Jesus had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins. He sat down at the right hand of God, and since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. Uh, we should be patient, even as Christ is patient, and he is being patient right now in this season that we're in, this age, this, this, this period of time, Christ is being patient and we should be as patient as Christ. And, uh, and that leads us to the second ingredient that I want to look at is first we have humility that is working at the demonstration of patience in our life to be patient like Christ. The second one is hope. When you know relief is coming, it's easier to endure for a little bit longer. Uh, if if you know that that replacements are coming, that something's about to to happen, you can just keep pushing for a little bit further. I, I'm thinking of even just being under strain of holding a pole up or holding a a building up or or some board or beam up, and and you're waiting on guys to get something more permanent in place. And, and uh, even just this week of working with Chad and Jeremy, Chad was holding a board and, and, and pushing something up. And he's like, I've got it for just a little bit. And his voice is straining and he's shaking. And he's, and he's waiting on them to get a nail in on this brace and uh, just a little bit longer. And uh, <clears throat> I think it, it, there's this idea of, of when you know if I can do just five more seconds, just five more seconds. Like, I'm, I'm going to give it to you. Just hold on. Five more seconds. Ten more seconds. Fifteen more seconds. If we know that we're about to be able to let up, we can push just a little bit longer. Um, I don't work out, as many of you know, not, not very regularly or anything, um, as you can probably tell. But I know people that do. And I, I've seen movies. Yes. I've seen movies. I've seen videos of guys or they're, you got this coach leaning over somebody, just one more, just one more, just a little bit longer. And they're, they're experiencing this complete muscle failure maybe, but not quite yet. They're shaking and they're about to give up, um, but they push themselves just a little bit longer to endure just for a little while longer. As believers, we have a hope. It should, push in us a little bit more 
to be a little bit more patient as Christ is patient, to be a little bit more uh, <clears throat> long-suffering when things are heavy, when the burden is just getting overwhelming, God knows. He knows the timing. He knows the situation. He knows how heavy your load is. He has not forgotten it. Uh, scripture tells us He has not forgotten you. He is not unknowing of what's going on in your life. And when we have this hope, if we can humble ourselves to recognize that God's ways are not our ways, that they're better, and we have a hope because we know the end plan, because we know what's going to happen. We know what's going to happen when all this ends. I can sit back. I have this peace that He's working in my life. Uh, he's producing this love. He's producing this joy in my environments. He's producing a peace that's not natural. And, and through all this, he is producing a patience that is not like any other patience I've ever, ever experienced in my life because I understand that his timing is not my timing, that I understand that he's coming again, that I understand that he's working things out according to his plan. He's working things out according to his riches and glory, that he's working things out according to his resources, according to what he knows is about to take place. And I, I see that relief is coming. I can push on just a little bit more. You can push on just a little bit more because Jesus is coming again. He is not unknowing. He is coming. Relief is coming. Uh, in John 14, 27, it says, peace I leave with you. We looked at this just last week. I, I, I referenced this verse. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. See, the opposite of patience is agitation, discouragement, uh, a desire for revenge, and so here we might be in a position to do things in our own strength and our own power to, to fabricate that hollow story, to fabricate that hollow path that, that has no um, real meat at the end, that has no eternal value whatsoever. And we might want to do that. The opposite of, of waiting on the Lord, the opposite of the patience uh, that, that Christ shows us and demonstrates us of waiting on the Father is this agitation, this discontentment, this discouragement this overwhelming anxiety and this desire to get somebody back for revenge. God does not want that for you today. God does not want that for his children. He does not want his children to live in agitation, but in peace. And so that's why he says, peace, I leave with you. You can, you can have peace right where you are. And this is this, this hope of peace, this hope of Jesus is an, uh, a key ingredient for the patience of Christ in our life. Uh, our hearts should not be troubled. We don't have to be afraid because we have this hope. And that leads to a patience in our life. He wants to remove discouragement and replace it with hope and praise. In Psalm 42, 5, it says, Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my salvation. <clears throat> God wants to remove that discouragement and replace it with hope and praise. That agitation, that anxiety, that impatience, that stirring within our flesh is not of God. That's not the, that's not the product of his nature that we're praying and seeking the Lord for. I hope you know today that God is patient and his spirit is producing that fruit of patience in our lives, within us. When we are patient, when you and I are patient, when, when, when we are long-suffering as Christ is long-suffering, we are leaving room for God to work in our hearts um, and in our relationships and in our finances and in, uh, in our environments and the things around us. We leave room for God to work when we are patient, when we can wait on God. Uh, when we lay down our schedule, when we lay down our time, our, our planners, our, all our agendas, all our, all our uh, things that, that we want to get done and accomplishment, our to-do list, and we can lay them down and trust God uh, that He's got a plan, that He's got a schedule, that He's got a to-do list, and I want to I be a part of what He's doing. I want to get on board with His schedule, with His day planner, with His list. Um, and, and when we're patient, we, 
we can thank the Lord for what and, and who he's brought into our life. Even the most annoying, discouraging, agitating person that we want to seek uh, to get out from under, we can be patient as Christ is patient, as long-suffering as he is with us. Uh, we should be demonstrating that same patience to the people and the world around us. Uh, Christ has been so patient with us. God the Father is so patient with us. And in comparison, when I look at my own life of thinking, well, you know, I feel like I could be pretty patient, you know, in a lot of areas, it doesn't, it, that's, it doesn't even measure to the long suffering and the patience of God. I'm praying uh, for uh, that type of patience to be produced in my life, for a Christ-like patience to be produced in my life with people, with money, with time, with all of the things that God has been given to me. I want to trust Him with it, with patience. I want to I want to completely trust that reliance on what He's doing. When we do that, we let God be God. Do you let God be God today in your life? Can you say, <clears throat> yes, I let God be God. Um, His ways are better than mine. His ways are, are, are much better. His timing is much better. His resources are better. Everything about God is better. I want to let God be God in my life. Uh, maybe you said that today. Maybe maybe for the first time you, you want to say that and say, God, I want you to be God in my life. He's been so patient with you that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, that he demonstrated this love, that he demonstrated his patience, long suffering, that while we our sinners. He died for us. I challenge you today. Can you say, God, I want you to be God in my life. Leave room for the Father to do something in your life. Leave room for, for the Father to, uh, to, to work all things for your good. Don't, don't develop a hollow story with no meat, with no substance, with no eternal value. Uh, I'm praying for you this week. I'm so encouraged to hear from many of you just what God's doing in your life. It's always a joy and a pleasure uh, to meet with you guys during the Zoom time, and I just want to encourage you to continue to do that. Continue to open the Word and pray for those around you. Pray for our church family. I'm praying for you. I love you. I'm praying for, for you this week that God is developing a patience in our life that demonstrates uh, who He is and His nature to the world around us.